Hi, it's Katrina. Roman Gladiator Arena. Last summer, archaeologists discovered the remains of a Roman-era theater in the ancient city of Mastara, located in modern-day Turkey's Aden province. The 1,800-year-old structure once seated as many as 20,000 spectators, but is now mostly underground, according to Project Survey leader Mehmet Umut Tunser. The team that made the discovery first noticed sizable stonework sticking out of the ground. They got to work excavating the building and protecting it from nature and the elements, and meanwhile dated it to around 200 AD. The arena was built during the Severan Dynasty, which encompassed five emperors and spanned from 193 to 235 AD. For the most part, the structure is well-preserved, with some rows of seats, the building's supporting walls, and the arena where gladiators fought remaining intact. It was smaller than the Colosseum, with 82-foot-tall walls and a central arena measuring 131 by 98 feet. Mastara was very developed and rich at the time, thanks to Roman administrators who focused on the city's economic growth, according to the study's authors. The increased variety and volume of Mastara's coins during that time period are a testament to its growth. Along with these improvements came the arena, where visitors placed bets on gruesome gladiator and wild animal fights. For those who could afford it, there were entertainment rooms for private spectators, and the building also had waiting rooms for the gladiators. It's the only known theater of its type ever found in Anatolia. Consequently, it attracted spectators from neighboring cities and all around. For now, the team's goal is to clean and preserve what's left of the arena, then to do geophysical surveys to better understand the parts of it that remain underground. Oldest Mexican Tomb Archaeologists working in southern Mexico found the remnants of a tomb that dates back 2,700 years, and professionals are saying that it could be the oldest burial of its kind ever performed in Mesoamerica. The tomb contains the body of a man who had been buried with jade and obsidian artifacts, ceramic vessels, and other grave goods. Archaeologist Emiliano Gallaga says the tomb dates back to between 500 and 700 BC, or about 2,500 years ago. There were also earlier burials, but experts say that this is the earliest example of an important person being buried inside of a pyramid, and of a pyramid being used as a tomb rather than a religious site or a religious temple. Back then, the pre-Hispanic cultures constructed pyramids to mimic the universe as they knew it, with levels leading from the underworld all the way into the heavens. At the highest part of the pyramid was almost always a temple, but not at this pyramid, which was found in the state of Chiapas, built by the Soque Indians. It's about 1,000 years older than the pyramid tomb at the archaeological site of Palenque. The man buried here was probably the ruler of the area. He was interred inside of a stone chamber at the bottom of a small pyramid. But as of right now, archaeologists don't know exactly who the man buried here was, if the pyramid had anything to do with the Maya or the ancient Olmecs, or why they moved from normal burials to placing bodies under pyramids. The Viking Elite The human remains of an elite Viking have just been recovered after over 100 years spent misplaced in a random box in the National Museum of Denmark. Researchers at the museum were working on a project involving textiles from the Viking Age when they rediscovered the bones. This was quite a shock for everyone involved, especially since the bones had originally been discovered in a burial mound in Denmark in 1868. The skeleton of a possible Viking warrior was found by local farmers who first shared the grave goods amongst themselves. But these goods were eventually recovered by scholars, sent to the museum, and then lost inside of a wooden box. As for the elite Viking himself, he was found with expensive wool garments, decorations of gold and silver, and two very strong iron axes. There was even a beeswax candle found on the coffin. All the artifacts suggest that the deceased must have been someone of great importance. He may have been part of the ruling party that dominated Denmark at the height of the Viking Age around 970 AD. But unfortunately, nobody knows who he was or what station he held. Even though the bones have been found after spending a century lost in the museum, researchers still can't say much about this guy, other than he was definitely an elite member of Viking society. Whale Vomit When Ken Willman was walking his dog along the beach in England, his dog began to make a bit of a fuss. Ken's dog had found what looked to be a rock, but according to what Ken told the BBC, when he picked up the rock and smelled it, it definitely didn't smell like any old rock. Ken took the rock home and did a quick Google search to see just what kind of a lump he had found. 
It turned out that Ken's dog had found a piece of ambergris, which comes directly from the digestive tract of a sperm whale. Would you have brought this home with you? I don't think I would have picked it up and smelled it. I don't know, how about you? But good thing Ken did. Ambergris does not smell good, but it is one of the most expensive ingredients found in many luxury fragrances. It's worth an absolute fortune. It's not quite clear what ambergris actually is. Some people call it whale poop, others whale vomit, but neither one is actually correct. Nobody knows how ambergris is created. All scientists know is that it comes from inside the whale's intestines and might be used as a type of fatty coating to help whales digest things like squid meat. Immediately after Ken's shocking discovery, a French ambergris dealer offered him $68,000 for the piece he had found on the beach. But according to the curator from the Aquarium of the Lakes in Cumbria, the piece could actually be worth as much as $180,000. Never take the first offer. Nobody knows if Ken has gone through with any sales yet, but he definitely stumbled upon a small fortune, all thanks to his dog. Graffiti in the Holy Sepulchre Just recently, when a rock leaning against a wall in a dark corner of Jerusalem's Holy Sepulchre building, known to locals and tourists as the Graffiti Stone, was inspected by two curious Israeli researchers. Apparently, this giant slab of stone had been sitting there for years, being passed by visitors every day with nobody knowing what it really even was. Then, when the two Israeli researchers came along and decided to look at the other side, they were shocked to find that the artifact was once used as part of a high altar by medieval crusaders. As it turns out, the stone was designed similar to the style of Roman altars in the 12th century. The ancient altar was probably used by the crusaders for holding mass, up until a huge fire happened at the church in 1808. Then, the stone got buried under a new floor that was installed, and it just kind of sat forgotten until it was discovered again in 2018. Ancient Humanoids In a recent and very rare discovery, multidimensional art has been found inside of a cave shelter in Tanzania. However, the reason this discovery is so strange is that the scenes appear to depict bizarre humanoid beings. Even more, the rituals depicted in the cave drawings don't line up with what scientists currently know about the traditions of the ancient Sandawe people, who have lived in Tanzania for thousands of years. The Sandawe people are descendants of the Gogo, and they are believed to have the oldest DNA known to science, dating back about 87,000 years. They are still living in Tanzania today, and they still hold on to many of their ancient ritual practices. And this is what makes the cave painting so strange. They seem to depict life forms that are not entirely human, some with large alien heads, and some even with the horns of demons. Plus, some of these humanoid creatures appear to be eating normal human figures. Others are eating buffaloes, giraffes, and even cattle. But the artwork is unlike anything else found in the region. It was first discovered by researchers from Poland, who claim that the artworks are several hundreds of years old, but are unable to put a proper date on them. Ghost Human Ancestor In a rather spooky discovery, researchers have discovered a mysterious ghost population of ancient humanoid creatures that went extinct after interbreeding with the earliest humans residing in West Africa. According to the report from the BBC, researchers have determined that DNA from this ancient ghost population currently comprises between 2% and 19% of the genetic ancestry of those still living in West Africa. Researchers also say that the interbreeding between this curious missing link and modern humans went down about 43,000 years ago. One of the reasons this could be a frightening discovery is that scientists believe they have revealed yet another undiscovered species of ancient human. We already know that European Homo sapiens mix with the Neanderthals, humans of the oceanic part of the Earth mix with ancient Denisovans, and so on. But there is some DNA floating around that we don't know where it came from. We are missing a group of humanoids. There were multiple groups of early humans mixing with other groups of ancient humanoids. However, nobody knows exactly how we came to be as we are today. Who were our ghost ancestors? This is proof of just how little we know about our own history. A personal engraving While excavating in anticipation of a road construction project in Cambridgeshire, England last year, a team of archaeologists discovered an ancient millstone bearing an engraving of a large phallus. The artifact dates back roughly 2,000 years during the Roman era in Britain. While this may not exactly be most people's idea of art in modern time, it meant something to the people who lived in the area two millennia ago. The phallus was seen as an important image of strength and virility in the Roman world, 
Lead archaeologist Steve Sherlock told Cambridgeshire Live, adding that Roman fighters often wore penis-engraved good luck charms before marching onto the battlefield. The rare artifact is one of just four decorated Roman millstones that have been discovered throughout Britain, and the latest in a series of baffling discoveries archaeologists have made during the road construction project. Other artifacts that have been found include woolly mammoth tusks, woolly rhino skulls, and evidence that people brewed beer in Britain as early as 400 BC. The objects, which date back to the Neolithic, Bronze and Iron Ages, and Roman, Anglo-Saxon and Medieval periods, also include the second gold coin ever found in Britain that depicts the Roman Emperor Laelianus, who reigned for just two months in 269 AD. Who were the Hobbits? Nicknamed the Hobbits for their markedly small stature compared to modern humans and many of our ancestors, Homo floresiensis and Homo luzonensis are extinct species that scientists originally believed were our distant relatives. But new research indicates that they may occupy a much closer branch to us on the family tree through possible interbreeding with the extinct archaic species known as the Denisovans, a close Neanderthal relative that interbred with us when they were still around. The study detected relatively high concentrations of Denisovan DNA in modern people living in the islands of Southeast Asia, suggesting that the ancestors of modern Papuans and South Asians interbred with a branch of the Denisovans. But no Denisovan fossils have ever been found in the region, leading the team to wonder if either or both of the hobbit species were actually southern Denisovans. H. floresiensis and H. luzonensis went extinct between 50,000 and 60,000 years ago, long after humans began migrating out of Africa. These geographical and time overlaps with our species makes the idea of us and them breeding entirely plausible. It could perhaps explain the conspicuous absence of the Denisovan fossils scientists expected to find near modern populations containing their DNA. There are a lot of unknowns when it comes to untangling the messy web of human DNA and establishing if, how, and where ancient hominid species intersected. And some scholars disagree that the hobbits are more closely related to us than scientists originally thought noting that their established presence in Southeast Asia as far back as a million to 700,000 years ago was too early for them to be Denisovans. A pile of gold In a remote and mountainous region of Kazakhstan, archaeologists recently stumbled upon a shocking treasure of royal gold jewelry inside of a burial mound. The burial mound contained at least 3,000 items, all dating back nearly 3,000 years. Researchers believe the tomb belonged to a royal member of the ancient Saka people. These were an ancient nomadic people who lived throughout several regions of Siberia and Central Asia. The treasure was full of earrings, gold plates, necklaces embedded with precious stones, and all of it was made with incredible attention to detail. What's really amazing is that some of the jewelry had been made using micro-soldering techniques that were quite advanced for that time. Last I heard, the graves had yet to be opened to reveal the bodies inside, but archaeologists are slowly working their way down. They believe that they will find the remains of a royal couple, maybe even an unknown king and queen. This is one of the only Saka burial mounds discovered, making it a very rare find. Even rarer is the fact that the burial mound had not been looted, as almost everything in the area discovered by archaeologists in recent years has already been pillaged by grave robbers. Thanks for watching! Which of these discoveries shocked you the most? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for another video! See you later!